Um, my name is Harvey Swift. Uh, I work for the International. I'm signed to the Impact Office as a regional director. Uh, I cover the region known as for Impact, known as the Southwest RAB. Uh, for the, from the iron worker perspective, that is the Texas Mid South District Council. It is the state of New Mexico, Texas, Oklahoma, Louisiana, and a pretty good chunk of Mississippi. Uh, and I want to thank everybody, welcome everybody, appreciate everybody taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to attend this webinar on impacts off the job accident program. Uh, the reason for this webinar is we've, we've got a constant churn in on the labor side of new business managers being elected, new apprenticeship coordinators being appointed in some locals, they're elected by virtue of their office. And it's such an important program that brings value to our ironworker members and our signatory contractors that those of us in the impact office who try to get the word out uh, to our partner locals district councils contractors iron worker members uh, we're always looking for different ways to to get that message out and explain things to people uh, that's where the the idea of this this uh, webinar was born not to mention uh, the program changed slightly in August of 2002. So there are a couple different nuances. There's a new uh, claim form. And we thought that it was high time to have a webinar to explain this program, how it can bring value to our signatory contractors our, and our local union members, aka the employees of our signatory contractors. I want to uh, point out a couple of things before I turn things over. Number one, the chat will not be monitored at all. Uh, if, you're, if you're in the chat, you're only talking to other attendees. You're not really posing a question to the presenter. However, if you look down at the bottom of your screen, assuming on your view options, it's at the bottom, but there's a Q&A button. If you have a question throughout the course of this webinar, please type it in the Q&A, not the chat. The chat will not be monitored. We're going to make every effort to ensure that every question that's posed in the chat is answered, hopefully on this webinar, either during the presentation or at the end. Uh, but feel free if you have questions and uh, about something that, that is being explained, feel free to type a, a question in the chat and we're going to do our best to get those answered. This, rec this webinar is going to be recorded. As you know, when you logged in, you had to click the little thing to continue. Um, it's being recorded and it's going to be put up on Impact's website for viewing later. Uh, hopefully that'll be done by tomorrow. Uh, it could be as late as Monday, but very, very shortly, uh, you'll be able to view this webinar um, again. If you have any questions, you can also contact me. My contact information is on the Impact website. Uh, I'm an iron worker out of, out of Tulsa, uh, local 584. I've been an iron worker for almost 30 years now. And one of my responsibilities with, uh, uh, with the impact office um, is not only being a regional director for the area I, I, I mentioned earlier, but it's also kind of the liaison for the off the job accident program between uh, WPAS, our local unions, the members, and uh, all of you to answer questions that can't be answered uh, in the brochure. And I'm always, my, my phone line's always open. I accept texts, emails, and phone calls. If you get my voicemail, please leave a message because I get too many spam calls in a day to return every call just to find out that my car warranty is about to expire. So with that, um, in short order, I'm gonna introduce you to Heidi Campbell, uh, Heidi is a lead account executive with WPAS. Uh, they are, that stands for Welfare and Pension Administration Services. Uh, they're out of Seattle, Washington. And uh, uh, WPAS is a wonderful vendor for Impact. They are the, the TPA or third party administrator for the off the job accident program and the maternity program. They do a wonderful job for us. And with that, 
I would like for you to welcome your friend and mine, Heidi Campbell. Thank you so much, Harvey. Uh, it's been such a pleasure working with everybody at Impact over the years. Uh, you know, one of my favorite benefits to help members with is this disability benefit. Helping put money in the pocket of those who are unable to work and are in need is quite fulfilling. We have lots of great stories we could share with you about how members have been so touched by these precious benefits. Um, but with that said, uh, I'll move on. We do have a presentation put together for you today. And I am proud to say that we have been administering these benefits with impact since 2012, you know, going 11 years in strong. I want to quickly go over the agenda here. We're going to talk about the definition of injury, caveats for the benefits in California and Canada. We'll go over some historical claims data, the top conditions per year. Uh, we'll look at some of the member claim averages. I'm actually going to go to the IMPACT website to show you how easy it is to navigate and find information you need that is related to this program. Um, that's going to include review of the new claim form that Harvey was explaining to us. We think that's really helped mitigate some of the pain points in getting these claims submitted and completed properly. We're going to take a look at the brochure, review that, and then I'm going to uh, talk you through the cycle of a claim, give you some information about how you submit claims, who can submit claims to us, and then most importantly, I think some good takeaways are going to be touching on some ways that members can avoid claims processing delays. And uh, in closing, we'll talk about how this program not only benefits the employees, but also the employers. So we're gonna dig right into this. Uh, impact in the brochure defines an injury, and it is defined as a bodily injury which is sustained as a direct result of an unintended or unanticipated accident that is external to the body and that occurs while you're eligible under your home health fund. Just pausing here, your home health fund is the health plan that your employer contributes to on your behalf. Uh, so we need to make sure you're eligible there when your injury occurs in order to qualify for the benefits of the IMPACT program. And we just wanna call out that an injury does not mean sickness, disease, mental incapacity, or bodily infirmary. And below I put some nice pictures in here of slip, trip, and fall. Those are all external injuries that were unanticipated, unexpected, and they're really good examples of what is an injury. Um, we're gonna move on and talk about California and Canada. Both, uh, both Canada and California offer governmental and sponsored benefits that are expected to be richer than the benefits offered through IMPACT. Um, in addition, Canadian residents are only eligible for benefits under this program when they're performing work in the USA for a long enough period of time that would grant them eligibility under the health plan in the location that they're working. Um, also, there could be some reciprocal agreements with the health plans that would grant that eligibility. Um, in addition to that, the California workers have been participating in the Impact Off the Job Accident Program since 2020. At that time, we worked with Impact to come up with plan language that would help navigate what the benefits of Impact are uh, compared to what the benefits available through the local city, municipality, state, or federal government sponsored programs would be. So the language includes these bullet points you see in front of you. The benefits that are available through the other programs are deducted from the benefit that's calculated when you have a claim under the program. Um, looking at the third bullet point, the impact benefits don't exceed 67.67% of your weekly earnings. Um, there's a maximum cap of that benefit at 800. So for an example, if you're in California 
and you're receiving $500 a week through the state, and you're eligible to receive 800 through impact, that $500 is deducted so that you're getting that additional 300. So still a great program, definitely still worth applying for these benefits, but we wanna make sure you understand the way these benefits are offset under the program. Hey, uh, Heidi, uh, do you mind if I interrupt you briefly? Oh, please, please. Thank you. Uh, I just got a, a, a message and it's in the chat. Uh, uh, James Munoz says that uh, the audio isn't working and uh, somebody else responded uh, that uh, uh, maybe your microphone has your audio kind of quiet. So I'm not sure if James is having a problem with the speakers and the interface with, with him because uh, I, I can hear you clearly, although, yeah, maybe a little quiet, but I don't have a lot of background noise or anything going on. Um, pretty easy for me. Some other people are saying the audio is working just fine. I just wanted to pause there for a second and make sure that we weren't having a lot of audio issues for, our, for the people that are attending. But it sounds like most people can hear both of us just fine, and I appreciate you taking the time to, to pause there for a second. Okay, I'm going to try to speak up and scoot a little bit closer uh, just to be as helpful as possible. Um, on my micro, I don't see a, a way to increase my microphone volume through this application. Uh, so please, if anything needs to be repeated, just drop that into the Q&A and Kenny can let me know. I'm sorry, Kenny, I've worked with Kenny so long. Harvey will let me know. <laughs> I'm the new improved Kenny. Um, although my mullet will never will never contend with with Kenny's. Uh, one thing on this, Heidi, since since we've already got things paused and and uh, uh, we're kind of chit chatting here, um, I want to ask a question about the second bullet under the California thing. It says that the impact benefits are reduced by the amount of those benefits payable. Now that's just not state or municipal or local uh, uh, benefits. That could also be the local union's health and welfare plan that have some type of, of disability payments that go to members. Is, is that correct? That is correct. And that's a really good call out, Kenny. So in addition to this caveat in California and Canada, the standard plan provision is to offset the home plan benefit that's available to you. Thank you for that, Heidi. I appreciate it. You bet. All right, I'm going to move on to the next slide. We're going to take a look at the top conditions per year. Um, some of these statistics for me are really fun, especially when we start with 2012. Um, this is the top condition when this program was first launched, dislocation of knee. The next year it was followed by inguinal hernias. And you, you can see the difference in numbers there. Uh, but going into 2014, oh, I wanted to pause here. We started tracking the cause of injuries. So you can see it's NA for the two, first two years. But working with David Fusion over at Impact and with Kenny then, they started wanting to track more, well, what's the nature, what's the cause? So we are tracking that information for the program now. Um, so moving on to 2014, the top condition was back injury due to lifting. Then the next few years, we had uh, injuries caused by falling, and all three of those years in a row was related to damage to the knee, meniscus tear, medial cartilage tear, um, and that followed problems with the knee in that first year. You just kind of see this pattern. This is a lot of rough and tough work, you know, a lot of a lot of you out there playing sports, uh, doing yard work, you name it. It's just a lot of wear and tear on those knees. And then the next year, it looks like we're coming back to um, hernias caused by lifting. And we have also uh, seen a fair amount of shoulder injuries. In fact, to be exact, in 2019, 515 claims that were received were related to, uh, you know, the um, rotator cuff problems, that kind of thing. So fun statistics, um, didn't mean to move on too quickly there. We're still tracking 2023. And 
and now we will move on. Hey, um, Heidi, before we get into the to the numbers in this chart, and you don't have to have to regress in the slides. We have a, a, a question that I think is pretty timely. Um, when uh, you gave us the, 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 the bulleted list of uh, uh, how the payments that uh, the state of California and or Canada are assumed to be better than what the impact payments might be. Um, I asked you a question like that's not just a, a state or municipality or federal government um, issue. It, it can also be the home health and welfare plan. So, uh, and, and you answered that question, I thought, I thought very well, but uh, Jason Lindsay asked for a little bit of a clarification in the, in the Q&A. Uh, Jason was wondering if, exact, can you explain how that works if the home health and welfare plan payment to the um, injured individual is a one-time payment? And he, he doesn't clarify anymore. I don't know if that's a one-time payment of $1,000 or a one-time payment, like based on an injury type of injury or like how that might work as opposed to a weekly benefit that's paid to the iron worker member. Can, can you kind of talk about that for a second? Yeah, I would love to actually. And I'm, I'm going to cover that a little bit in the cycle of a claim. But to answer Jason's question, what happens when we receive a claim it's going to be accompanied by a completed claim form. It's going to let us know that there's other benefits, um, what RAB you're in, what your book number is. So we're going to reach out to the home plan. We're going to find out what that benefit is. If they tell us it's a one-time upfront payment, then, and this benefit is on a weekly benefit, I don't know that this ever has come up, but every week, let's say it was a thousand dollars and you're going to get a full 800 for an impact. So the first week we would offset 800 and the next week we had offset that additional 200. Um, please let me know if that didn't answer your questions. I'm, I'm happy to hear from you to kind of refine what we're going to zone in on. Thank you, Heidi. Okay, um, if we're ready, I think I'll go over the claim averages with everybody. And starting in 2012, the first year of the program, remember, the, the program pays up to 42 days or six weeks. So the first thing we're going to call out in 2012, the average claim paid out 5.24 weeks. And the average benefit was just over $2,600. And that's the collective benefit, obviously not the weekly benefit. And then the next year, you know, you can see that um, members got to work just a little bit quicker than the year before. But throughout all of this, it's really stayed static. And what that tells us is that members are using this program specifically for the amount of time they need. They want to get back to work. So we're not seeing abuse where every single claim is for that entire six weeks. Uh, and, and that's a great thing. It's neat to see. You can see year over year how the benefit, the total benefit has gone up just a little bit and that would coincide with the wages as members progress in their trade and also as wages go up in general. And I'm going to move on to the next slide. Here's where I'd like to guide you through a few, a few slides to talk about the internet. Um, I, ha I do have a few slides prepared here for various stages of the internet, but rather than go through all of these one by one, I'm gonna take you into the live impact website. I think it's easier to see than you can see here on my shared screen. So going back to the link here, I'm going to do a new share here. It's going to take me just a quick second. All right. Okay. Um, would you let me know if you can see this okay? You got it perfectly, Heidi. Thank you. Wonderful. So when you go to the impact website right here, my search engine uh, narrowed it down to the member programs. So I am on the 
member program tabs instead of the impact home page. So there's a drop down here when I click the member programs for iron workers. When I get to iron workers, I'm going to scroll down again for the off the job accident plan. Once I get there, I can see that there is a YouTube presentation out there already. Might be great if you haven't seen it to take a look at that. There's also a little more information listed here about the website. Our phone number is right here, along with our web or sorry email address for submitting claims and a link to the other our, our website, which I'm going to go over in just a second. Okay, so for me. You can find that information down there, but Impact has done such a great job with this website that they've given us quick links here over to the right. So using my trust login, if you've had a claim and you want to look at the explanation of benefits, if you have a, a medical or a dental claim, your insurance company is going to mail you a statement that shows how much they paid, how much your cost share is, that kind of thing. It's the same thing here. When we process a disability claim, it's gonna let you know how many days it was paid, what the date range paid was, what was the amount of the benefit, if um, the benefit max, there would be a message about that, that kind of information. Um, the exciting news is that Welfare and Pension has created a new login experience for the members. It's called multi-factor authentication. Before, a lot of you have had a claim will already know that you had to apply to receive a personal PIN, and then you would get it in the mail, then you could access the website. Now, our enhanced website allows you to type in an email address or your social security number. You get to create your own password. See right here to the right, create new account. And everybody will need to do this, even if you had a PIN. Now that we have multi-factor, you're in control of your username that you want to use and your password. Um, so after you fill that out, you'll be taken right into that website there for the members. And I am going to go back a screen. Um, let me know if your these pages are following along okay, please. Looks good so far, Heidi. Excellent. Now we're going to take a look at the brochure. Most of the locals, the impact office, probably training centers, most likely have a supply of these. So if it's something you're interested in looking at, that, that's a good resource in addition to the website. If you want hard copy ones and don't have them, I would certainly recommend that you reach out to Harvey to get a supply. From time to time, our office works with impact on updating uh, what information is listed here and what the format looks like. Uh, what well, was last updated in 2022. And this I think, sure. I'm sorry, Heidi, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, go, please go ahead. I, I'll just speak about the brochure whenever you're finished. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. The brochure is printed in a foldable format since it's a brochure. Uh, so I'm actually going to scroll down. We really start right here. Here's the introduction. Then we get into the definition of eligibility under this program, definition of the total disability. We talk about when your benefits begin, how much your benefits are going to be, how we coordinate benefits when you're receiving other income that we covered just a little bit ago. Um, importantly, it, it advises you that it is subject to taxes and at the end of the year, you will get a tax form called a 1099 MISC, M-I-S-C. Um, and there's a provision about recurrent disability. We, we had a few cases where members actually had two claims in one year. You know, you could have a member who had one injury, got recovered, went back to work, then had another condition. So what we're gonna look at is how long did you go back to work? Was it for the same or a totally unrelated condition? So if you returned to active work for two weeks or more and had a re-injury of the same condition, that would be considered a new period of disability. But if it were less than that two weeks, it would be considered the same, unless it was due to a 
totally unrelated cause, then it would be considered a different claim. So really good program. Uh, we talk about when the benefits end and how to file a claim. And I'm going to go over how to file the claim in a little more detail. So and when I scroll back up to the top, yes. Yeah. Uh, before we move uh, uh, too far forward, Heidi, I want to make sure that uh, uh, all 50 plus people, 60 plus people on the on the webinar know that you don't have to reach out to me to order these claim forms or to order these brochures. Um, while I will do everything I can to make that happen for you, uh, the Impact website has a publications and resources uh, section where business managers, apprenticeship coordinators, contractors, uh, they can order these things and they're at no cost. Uh, they don't cost anything. And I want to, I want to challenge any business manager, contractor, or apprenticeship coordinator on the call to once we're finished, go and look at the brochures in your office. And if they're not the August, 2022 edition, please throw those in the trash. They're outdated. There have been some updates, a few changes. Um, they're minuscule, um, from a print perspective but they're they're pretty impactful from a program perspective uh, they don't uh, limit eligibility um, to an individual iron worker very much at all uh, basically the the biggest change um, that happened just before 2022 august of uh, 2022 was that there was a it used to be that an iron worker just needed to be eligible in their home or in a health and welfare plan um, and have the, the claim forward submitted, have every, all the other I's dotted and T's crossed. It was a good, a good claim. Didn't happen at work. It was not uh, the result of, of, of sickness or, or illness. It wasn't glaucoma. It wasn't a heart attack. Um, so definitely as a result of an injury. But what was added in, in the 2022 edition was that the iron worker needed to be a member of the Iron Workers International. Um, there's nuances with that, some right to work state issues that came into play and caused a change to the program. Um, first and foremost, make sure you have the, the most recent edition of the brochure. And secondly, if you need more brochures, go on the Impact website. You can download this as a PDF. Um, if you print it out, it will have to be like the trifold thing, like a brochure. And if you're real smart in printing stuff, you can do that. That's not me, uh, but make sure that uh, uh, you have the most current version. And if you need more of those, uh, look in the Impact Bookstore, order those. And if, you ha if you're having issues, call the 800 number for Impact or call me. I, I would be happy to help anybody that's having troubles, um, but I would rather not feed people fish. I'd rather teach them how to fish personally. Thank you, Harvey. That was great information for me as well. Um, the rest of the brochure, it talks about what types of things are excluded. For example, items that are not injuries would not be covered by the program. There's an appeal procedure section and again, uh, information on how you could submit a claim. And now I'd like to show you the claim form. The claim form is where it all really begins. And you can either pick it up by downloading it from the website. Uh, your local can possibly help members do this as well. Our office can certainly help members do this. We're happy to email these to members whenever they need them. Uh, it all starts at the top. Is this an initial request or a supplemental? Please let us know if it's a new address. The iron worker fills out their information, provides a description of the injury along with the injury date, uh, noting whether it's at work because out an at work injury would be an exclusion. And uh, it asks various other questions to rule out any possible plan exclusions up front. We try to collect what we can up front so that the follow up work once we receive a claim is as minimal as necessary. Uh, talks about hospitalization, whether you've retired, receiving unemployment benefits, etc. So the member fills this out, signs it, dates it. Then they need to take it over to the local union uh, to have various information filled out. The employer 
the local number, what RAV are they under, the job classification, and some wage information here. And then we're looking again for confirmation of date last work or return to work. You know, sometimes we get these claims after the member had a disability and is already back at work. Um, then we need the signature from the local and the date signed. And the next stop is for this to go to the member's attending physician. So the physician is going to carefully fill out the information needed on this portion of the claim form. And then we provide instructions for how to get this claim filed. Simple as uploading it to this link right here. It can also be faxed to this number here, or it can be mailed. It can be placed in the mail and sent to this address right here. Any questions along the way, we're happy to help answer those. And I'll, I'll, I'll kind of chime in on that point, Heidi. Uh, uh... WPAS, the team that you have put together that's that's helping impact, they are wonderful people. Um, they really do a good job. You and your team do a good job for us and our members. And we appreciate you guys very, very much. Um, I'm the fortunate one that gets to work directly with you and, and, and Chris and, and, and several others in the office. But uh, I will say, if you'll scroll back up to the claim form, especially the doctor's section, if you don't mind, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, or you can tell me, Harvey, I'm going to cover that when we talk about, uh, some of the things that a person can do to not have their claim delayed, right? A legitimate claim gets delayed because things happen. Uh, paperwork's filled out wrong. People don't, don't completely understand, or they make a mistake on a form. Those things happen. And those are the things we're going to try to avoid. Um, and make people aware of what they can do on their own behalf, right? So um, if I'm jumping the gun, please set me straight. Like this is your webinar, it's not mine. Uh, however, I've noticed over the past couple of years since I kind of stepped in and, and uh, uh, took this from Kenny, or he gave it to me to be more fair, he forced me to take it from him. Um, uh, I've noticed a, a, a fair handful of times, a good amount of times, this section right here by the attending physician can sometimes be the sticking point because there are things that have two different medical codes, right? Uh, for a similar injury or a, siddly, a, a similar something that's going on with a person that can be uh, related to an injury or not. And sometimes those medical codes and what the physician puts in place, puts in writing, can really determine whether that claim is delayed and there has to be an appeal filed simply because the physician w was in a hurry like all doctors are. They never want to spend more than 30 seconds with us if they don't have to. And they're just writing stuff down or the physician's assistant, they're not really listening to you. Um, I'm, I'm thinking of, of one case a, a few years ago where a person had to have an appendectomy and that a, the, the ruptured appendix was caused by an accident. It wasn't that the person was sitting at home watching television, watching Netflix or playing games or whatever they were doing and all of a sudden their appendix burst or they felt the need to go to the hospital. So that's an, that's an illness that wouldn't be covered. But this person got into an in, into an uh, in, uh, an accident, vehicle related accident that caused their appendix to burst, and the attending physician put down the wrong code for that. I believe it's the wrong medical code. I could be wrong in, in what I'm saying. I'm not a I'm not a doctor. Don't even play one on TV. But that caused that that claim to be delayed by three or four weeks, right? So those things can happen, and I think it's important for everybody to understand that that communication with the physician is pretty important up front because that can be a claim delay. I'm really glad you brought that up, Harvey. You hit it spot on. And, and what a great example. Who, who, a physician, like you said, they're in a hurry. I treated this person's ruptured appendix. I didn't treat his injury otherwise. So of course, to him, that's all it is. So it, it is very important to check the paperwork. What additional information can you provide? 
we do have to investigate these claims. And it, it also, it starts with the member. When you go to the doctor because you're, you're in an injury and you need treatment and you need help, let them know I had an injury, not just I have back pain. You know, and it, and it gets really hard when we don't know what date an injury started. So it's really important for members to provide a thorough as history as they can with their providers. Um, we're happy to investigate whenever a member feels something should be covered that may, maybe wasn't. And, and the good news is that is the outlier, not the norm. But they do they do come up, so I'm I'm glad that you brought that up. Thank you, Harvey. Thank you, Heidi. I appreciate you. And we are enhancing this claim form, even though we just enhanced it. We're going to add some how to avoid delay tips on here that hopefully can give you a checklist when you're filing claims to make sure everything's ready to go. All right, I'm going to navigate back to this website here. I do think that really is everything I wanted to cover. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen and go back to my presentation. Just give me one second. All right, here we are, right where we left off. There we go. So I'll just kind of scroll past these few slides we already talked about, except I do want to show you this one. You know, you um, like we talked about, your injuries just happen as a result of doing all the stuff you do outside of work. And I just love this picture of somebody who is riding a motorcycle, broke, broke both of their legs, but wants to get right back on a motorcycle. These are stock photos, so don't feel like these are personal pictures of anyone because they are not. Totally fictitious. And we talked about the new login. It's great. You don't have to wait for anything by in the mail anymore. We've gone over the claim form and the brochure. So here's our claim cycle. It all starts with the member. Obtain your claim form. Complete that section. Get it over to the local or your physician. You don't have to send it to the local first. You could have it go to the physician and then go over to the local, but make sure all of those steps are done. So as the local completes it, the doctor completes it, and then we need to get it submitted. We have seen a few instances here where the member arranged with the doctor to submit that claim form on their behalf. Well, guess what? They never did, or it's sitting, sitting in a pile of work waiting for somebody to get to. So the rule of thumb is sometimes it's faster to do it yourself if you're able, or, or reach out to the local, try to find some help getting that submitted. Um, even offer the doctor that they send it to our email address that we talked about earlier. We're here to help make sure that gets submitted the quickest way possible, but make sure you follow up. If you haven't heard anything for a while, don't assume that everyone said they were going to do what they were going to do. The, the accountability means call us, make sure we have it on file. And if we don't, let's backtrack and start following up with who had that form last. Once we get that form, we do have to review it. We, Harvey brought up some really good points about things that we have to review. We make sure it's complete. We investigate it for to make sure it's for an injury and that it's an injury that's covered and not excluded under the program. We contact your home plan on each and every claim to verify your eligibility on the date of your injury. From there, <coughs> excuse me, we also verify whether your home plan has benefits for the same injury that need to be offset. So they're going to confirm what those benefits are. We'll get that calculated into our benefit calculations. And, and we have an additional step for the California and Canadian residents to figure out what their benefits are offered through the state or through their governmental agency to do those further offsets. After that step is done, we calculate those benefits. We get that claim processed in our system, set up to pay out weekly 
over the course of the claim or pay out the full benefit if the claim was submitted after the injury and the member's already back to work. After we process those claims each week, they get transmitted electronically. They, meaning the adjudication results, are transmitted in a file over to IMPACT. We accompany that file with our explanation of benefit statements. From there, IMPACT is going to issue checks to pay the members and mail those checks with our explanation of benefit statements. At the same time, we're going to upload the explanation of benefit statements to the trust website that you can now access creating your own username and password. At the end of the year, if you have had an impact off the job accident claim, impact will issue you the tax form 1099 MISC. And that is your cycle of a claim. Um, I want to clock back here a little bit though. There are times where welfare and pension does need to request additional information about your claim. Uh, for example, if you didn't have a date of injury, we might need to find that out. If it didn't indicate what your last date worked was or who your employer was, we're going to have to contact you to get that information. There's also certain types of injuries that we have to investigate to make sure that injury type isn't something excluded as listed in the exclusions from the brochure. Okay, I'm going to move on to claim submission. Over to the left is a column that talks about who sends us claims. We get claims from members, from the locals, from impact, from healthcare providers, occasionally from attorneys when it involves an injury for which somebody else is responsible, and also we get them from the home plans. Uh, we have re we've actually built really good relationships with the home plans, and it's great that some of, some of them let us know, hey, I've got a member with this disability, he sent in a claim form, we call them, they're able to share that with us so that we can coordinate benefits with them more efficiently. And now I want to talk about how welfare and pension receives claims. The most popular choice, email. Here's our email address. It's also on the brochure and it's also on our claim form. Fax, mail, or in person by appointment. Um, because of COVID, we're still not fully operational as far as walk-ins go. And I know that's completely unrealistic for most of the impact population. But to those few individuals who are close to our Mercer Island, Washington office, they can make an appointment to come drop off a claim form. Okay, the moment we've all been waiting for, what can we do to speed up our claims process, have a great experience and avoid delays in processing? The first bullet point, review your claim form carefully. You want to make sure that section A, B, and C are all thoroughly completed. Next step is going to be to sign your claim form. You, you've checked everything, but go back and make sure you've signed it, the doctor signed it, the local has signed it. And then, like we just talked about a few slides back, make sure that your physician or the local or yourself submits that completed claim form. If they are sending it on your behalf, you want to make sure that that task gets done. Absolutely, Heidi, and, and just to kind of chime in um, uh, really quickly, uh, I'm kind of an old school guy, right? Like I grew up in a pen and paper, or pencil and paper world, and I feel like for a person of my age who was born before the internet, born before cell phones, born before answering machines, or at least before answering machines were very popular, uh, I feel like I've made the transition okay. Now I'm kind of a hybrid guy, but um, when it comes to things like this, I kind of go old school, and that's just me personally. So every every iron worker member that I've talked to, um, who's called to check on their claim, number one, I ask them, "Have you called WPAS?" Because that's all I'm going to do to check on your claim, and I'm getting. 10, 15 calls from different ironworker members within a week. Um, I'll do that. However, you can do the same thing I'm doing. But what I've found is that most of the time, whenever somebody's 
uh, curious what the status is of their claim. WPAS has not received that is the majority reason um, that they haven't heard anything or they're not checking their mail or their email or answering their phone when WPAS is trying to get in touch with them. And I've always, uh, if I speak to an iron worker before they submit a claim, I always encourage them to submit the claim yourself and keep a copy of it and just write on the top of it in, in, in pencil, just script um, what day you emailed that or fax that. Um, but if the if you think the if you trusting the local um, staff, the office staff at the local union, or the physician's assistant or the nurses at the doctor's office to do that, you better follow up because you need to make sure that that claim was submitted. Um, the clock doesn't really start ticking until the claim's submitted, and people don't keep a lot of records anymore. I found they do a lot of things digitally, and and for me personally. I always encourage individual iron workers, email that claim yourself. Um, don't trust a fax receipt that it was actually received. Sometimes those things don't work properly, but if you can't do it yourself or didn't do it yourself, follow up, make sure that it was actually done. Because I've, I've done some things uh, in the past with, with uh, iron workers who were asking about their claim form and I just asked them, did you email it in yourself or fax it? No the local or the doctor's office did. I said, you should call them because WPAS has not received your claim form yet. And that's usually the culprit. Thank you, Harvey. Important things. Um, another thing that would be important for you to do is to verify your contact information. Make sure your address, email address, and phone number are correct. Also very important is to make sure everything you put on your claim form is legible as possible. It can be really difficult to read writing, especially when it gets digitized into the system, things can get a little bit fuzzier. So those are some, some good tips to make sure we know how to contact you. Oops, sorry about that. Um, check your mail. There could be times where we've sent a form to you because we do need information. We could send a form to your doctor because we need information from them. Uh, be sure to check your mail and complete and return any paperwork that we might send to you. And again, you can scan that, send it by email. You could take a picture of it and email. As long as we can read it, we're going to accept it. Harvey already touched on this bullet point. Take some initiative. If you're told we don't have a claim form, reach out to your doctor or the local if that is the entity who said that they would help you get that submitted. Um, if you're eligible for the local city, municipality, state, federal government type benefits, make sure you apply for them. They're offset even if you don't apply for those benefits but are eligible to do so, I should add. I missed one on here. Um, I just wanted to make sure everybody really understood that we do, I know I talked about it, but we do reach out to your home plan. We do verify your eligibility. So it's a good idea for you when applying for a claim to confirm your eligibility as well. Just make sure that you understand whether or not you're eligible to apply for the benefit from the beginning Okay, now we'll talk about how this program was created with members and employers in mind. When the program was created, workers' compensation premiums were discussed, and employers can realize a premium savings by participating in this program. When we have non-work-related injuries, employees are now honestly filing claims through impact rather than having a false work-related claim against an employer. Also, you have healthier employees. The benefits provide income to the employees who are injured so that they're able to stay at home and recuperate and fully heal instead of trying to come back to work too quickly and re-injuring themselves. So these are all really great benefits that work employees and employers work together. 
On this slide, we talk about our customer service. Uh, we serve members, locals, healthcare providers, along with impact. And our office is open Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. through 5 o'clock p.m. And that is Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and we do have a new phone system. I'm really excited to share this with you. We no longer have voicemail. Uh, you don't, we also have this great callback feature. If you call us and there's a whole time, you're busy, you're getting back to work, you have you know, other commitments you need to attend to, you can use our callback feature Will the next available representative is going to call you back so you don't have to sit on hold. We're getting really good feedback about that. It's pretty fabulous. We are using call analytics that identify calls that need escalation. Maybe, maybe a member called, maybe something didn't get explained to them very well. If the member's voice raises or our agent's voice raises, that's gonna get queued for review by a supervisor so that we can make sure that all of our members' needs are being met satisfactorily. And if, if a member, for example, it, it happens very rarely, but it does happen. If we have a member who is abusive to any staff, that would be tracked in our systems so that we could reach out and call the local saying, hey, we have this situation and see what we could do to resolve it and work better with that member going forward. In addition, we're using artificial intelligence that helps our management develop training guidelines so that we have enhanced customer service experience. A more trained staff is going to be able to answer more questions for the members and have less need to follow up with their seniors and get back to members. So we're very excited about this. It rolled out in April, it's still fairly new. So if you have any critique about it, we definitely want to hear from you and take that away as how we can do better. We can be reached by phone, it's a toll free number. We can reach, be reached by fax, email, and in person by appointment. And with all of that said, I thank everybody who's participated today. It's been a pleasure speaking with you and serving you. Heidi, thank you so much. Um, this has been a great journey since uh, April or May of this year to see this uh, webinar come to fruition to give people information that that hopefully will help individual iron workers um, and employers, as you pointed out a couple slides ago. It's, it, it's great. It's my favorite program that Impact has, hands down. Um, I really think that there's a, a huge value. So with that, I have a statement that's based on a question that was asked that you, uh, that's, that's more of a technical thing for the impact side. And then I've got a question. Uh, I've been answering the questions. I've interrupted you a couple times, uh, but I've, then I have a, a, a simple question, at least one right now. So the statement I want to make is uh, 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 a couple of people have asked if the slide deck would be available in addition to uh, the recorded webinar and the answer is yes when the impact office loads the recorded webinar um, on the impact website the slide deck will also be available as a PDF like you've seen here uh, and it's going to be available on both the off the job accident page that Heidi went through earlier and it's also going to be available on the impact webinars if you go to re uh, uh, publications and resources there's a webinars tab there um, it's those both things the recorded webinar and the slide deck will be available in both places so hopefully that's helpful and then uh, the, the question that I had Heidi and I've had this question in the past on the phone from business agents business managers and iron workers as they're filling out the claim form and unfortunately, I've not committed to the answer to memory. So I couldn't just answer in the, in the Q&A. Uh, in section B of the claim form, uh, it asks for the iron workers gross basic weekly wages. Is that their hourly rate that they, that they have on their check for every hour they work? Is, is that the weekly rate, assuming they work 40 hours a week, 
And does that include benefits or not? Is it just the, the straight on the check money? Yeah, it, it's the gross amount and we can accept an hourly or a weekly amount as long as it's identified. This is the weekly rate or this is the hourly rate. Great. We need it because we consider a week 40 hours and we consider disability one seventh of a week, right? If you're out for five days, that's five sevenths of a week, for example. So we need that to do those conversions about the maximum benefit up to 66.67% of wage up to the maximum. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, I hope that that answers the question. I, it answered the question for me. I hope that it also answers the, the, the question in the, in the Q and a, uh, with that, I guess Heidi will wait around for just a few seconds and see if, uh, if anybody posts another question in the chat, I know sometimes there's a five or 10 second delay, but we're coming up on the hour and we want to be respectful of not only the people who are participating in the webinars time, but your time as well. Uh, I can't tell you how much it means to me to have you uh, agree to do this webinar and such a fantastic job you did. Uh, very, very happy and appreciative of our relationship with WPAS. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. I, I always love helping everybody understand the benefits. It's always nice to talk about something you have a little knowledge about. Thank you so much, Heidi. Thank you. With that, I hope everybody has a, a wonderful Thursday, a better Friday, and an even greater weekend. Um, that's my hope for everybody on this call. It's my hope for me too. Um, Y'all take care and hopefully uh, this webinar was informative and can help you and help your members. Thank you everybody so much. Bye everyone.